What if I told you the first African-American man to be granted a patent, along with the first dry cleaning business in the United States of America, desegregation on the New York busing systems, and the 21st president of the United States of America all have something to do with one another? Would you believe me? We say to America, I am the greatest. Thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of America's Greatest. First, we would like to ask that you like, share, and subscribe, as always, and make sure that you visit us at thewestsidegazette.com. That way you can see the stories there before we actually create these videos. So, without further ado, I give to you another episode of America's Greatest. Thomas Jennings was the first African American to receive a patent on March 3rd, 1821. His patent was for dry cleaning process called dry scouring. The first money Thomas Jennings earned from his patent was spent on legal fees necessary to liberate his family out of slavery and support the abolitionist cause. Now, in a lot of the stories that we're telling through the newspaper, we talk about abolitionists. An abolitionist at that time is somebody who opposed slavery. So you'll hear that in reference to Frederick Douglass, as well as many others who opposed slavery and also helped create the anti-lynching laws at that time and protect blacks or African Americans in the community. Thomas Jennings was a free man born in 1791 in New York City. He was 30 years old when he was granted a patent for a dry cleaning process. In his early 20s, Thomas Jennings became a tailor and later opened a dry cleaning business in the city. As a tailor, Jennings' skills were so admired that people near and far came to him to alter or custom tailor items of clothing for them. Eventually, Jennings' reputation grew such that he was able to open his own store on Church Street, which grew into one of the largest clothing stores in New York City. Now, if you think about that, an African-American man opening a tailor shop in New York City and growing that to one of the largest businesses in the city at that time, I think that's a pretty remarkable feat. And one of the things that I'm noticing about a lot of the stories that I'm telling is just the ability to overcome and endure what was going on and still find success. A lot of the people that we're doing stories on are extremely resilient. And I hope some of that rubs off on those that listen to the stories because you'll really find that you can accomplish many things regardless what your obstacles are at the time. And I'm using some of this as motivation for myself as well. So I hope you do that at home. While running his business, Jennings developed dry scouring. He had many customers complain of their clothes being ruined by stains and so he began experimenting with cleaners and mixtures that would remove stains without harming the material. Thomas Jennings earned a large amount of money as a tailor and even more with his dry scouring invention and most of the money he earned went to his abolitionist activities. In 1831, Thomas Jennings became assistant secretary for the first annual convention of colored people in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Thomas Jennings' dry scouring technique created modern day dry cleaning. His patent made him a fortune for the time. Jennings was fortunate that he was a free man and not a slave at the time of his invention. Besides all the other indignities and cruelties African-American slaves had to face, they were also ineligible to hold a patent. Under the United States Patent Laws of 1793, a person must sign an oath or a declaration stating that they were a citizen of the United States. While there were apparently provisions through which a slave can enjoy patent protection, the ability of a slave to seek out, receive, and defend a patent was highly unlikely. Later, in 1858, the Patent Office changed the law, stating that since slaves were not citizens, they could not hold a patent. Furthermore, the court said that the slave owner, not being the true inventor, could not apply for a patent either. This is important because if Thomas Jennings was not born a free man, he would not have been able to seek out and also be granted the patent for dry, dry scouring, which we now know as dry cleaning. Thomas Jennings passed away in New York City in 1856. Shortly before his death, his daughter Elizabeth won a benchmark lawsuit on Sunday, July 16th, 1854. Elizabeth Jennings set off for the first colored congregational church where she was an organist. Running late, she boarded a streetcar on the 3rd Avenue Railroad Company at the corner of Pearl and Chatham Streets. The conductor ordered her to get off, 
When she refused, the conductor tried to remove her by force, eventually with the aid of a police officer. Miss Jennings was ejected from the streetcar. Now, this part might sound a little bit familiar because this was 100 years before Rosa Parks so bravely refused to move from her seat on the bus. So this is something that's very important because a lot of people don't know the story about Elizabeth Jennings, who happened to be the daughter of Thomas Jennings, the first African-American man to have a patent. Horace Greenlee's New York Tribune commented on the incident in February 1855 by stating she got upon one of the company's cars last summer on the Sabbath to ride to church. The conductor undertook to get her off, first alleging the car was full. When that was shown to be false, he pretended the other passengers were displeased at her presence. But when she insisted on her rights, he took hold of her by force to expel her. She resisted. The conductor got her down on the platform, jammed her bonnet, soiled her dress, and injured her person. A, quite a ca crowd gathered, but she effectively resisted. Finally, after the car had gone on further with the aid of a policeman, they succeeded in removing her. Her story was publicized by Frederick Douglass and received national attention. Elizabeth Jennings filed a lawsuit in Brooklyn court against the driver, conductor, and the Third Avenue Railroad Company. Because of her father's prominence and wealth, she was able to attain the best legal representation and hired the law firm of Culver, Parker, and Arthur to sue the bus company and was represented in court by a young attorney named Chester Arthur, who would go on to become the 21st president of the United States. Miss Jennings would ultimately win her case in front of the Brooklyn Circuit Court in 1855. The jury awarded damages in amount of $225 and $22.50 in costs. The next day, the Third Avenue Railroad Company ordered its cars desegregated. Stories like this are extremely important that we understand what was going on at the time, but also the obstacles that people had to face and were able to overcome. The resiliency that's within our community, I think, is one of the most important things that I can continue to get from these stories, and I hope it inspires some of you at home. So thanks so much for your time. I really appreciate the support. And also, one of the things you can do to see these stories first is get the Westside Gazette newspaper, or you can go on the westsidegazette.com and check out these stories before I actually do these videos. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.